All right, what's up, my brothers from another mother? I'm on with Rolo Tomasi of the Rational Mail series. We're going to be going through a bunch of questions today on Q&A uh, that I solicited through some social media platforms. Uh, those of you that are familiar with Rolo need no introduction. Uh, those that aren't, I'm going to leave some links in the description below for his work to his books and to his blog. Uh, Rolo's a red pill pioneer and a guy that I can say for myself personally has opened my eyes to the way the world works. And I know he's um, woken up a lot of guys that have been sleepwalking through their life as well. So we're gonna get a bunch of questions today. Leave a comment below and smash the like button and show this to somebody that might need to see it. All right, Rolo, so next question I got for you. We were just talking earlier about the whole, you know, expose of Hollywood and Harvey Weinstein and, and Louis C.K., um, you know, how they're being called out for their indiscretions, uh, you know, their sexual conduct, so on and so forth. Um, you touched on it close to the end as we were chatting about, um, you know, the way society is going in this direction where it's like all masculinity is considered toxic to some degree and it seems to be, you know, increasing. Um there was something on Twitter that I retweeted earlier this morning. Uh, Roosh said, uh, sexual harassment equals an unattractive man wanting to fuck me. And, you know, we're talking about Weinstein and, you know, Louis C.K., who we both point to as being beta males and kind of exercising this power that they have to, you know, you know, deal with this need that they have, obviously, like all men do. But we haven't heard anything about, oh, Gene Simmons raped me or, you know, Mick Jagger jerked off in a pot pot plant like i'm sure these guys have all done you know like gene simmons admittedly you know declares that he's had sex with over five thousand women mm -hmm. so why is it why is it being exposed on the softer side of, of men like these beta men versus these you know I, I mean i think you'd agree gene simmons would be alpha mick jagger even though he's got a different you know kind of swagger to him is also alpha but what like why this imbalance well, it, it gets back to um, sort of that buyer's regret. Um, any guy or any any uh, any woman that's going to have sex with Gene Simmons, uh, you know, considering his his reputation precedes him uh, since the '70s, uh, it pretty much knows what they're getting into. So it depends on what is a woman going to regret and what is she going to resent, and the the high high value of that target. So when you look at Gene Simmons, Gene Simmons is, you know, a financial genius. He's a branding, you know, prodigy. I mean, the guy, the guy you just look at the money that this guy's made over the, over the centuries and, and the, uh, the, uh, uh, just the swagger and the unapologetic, you know, attitude that, that he has. And you, you have a recognized alpha male. So yeah, why why are not women coming up and saying, well, Gene Simmons raped me? Because he's got a lot of he's got a lot of money. He's got a lot of uh, he'd be a very high value target. But the thing is, is that the women who get in with Gene Simmons want bragging rights, whereas a guy like Harvey Weinstein, there is no bragging rights right there, and there is no bragging rights to say that I got with Louis C.K. Um, there is no bragging rights, or there is no um, you know. I, I would say from a an intrinsic hypergamous uh, perspective when it comes to women's hindbrain, is a woman who had sex with Gene Simmons going to be more hypergamously satisfied than she is as if she had sex with Louis C.K. So she's going to resent that. And if she's going to resent either one of these guys, um, at least the hypergamous side of things is going to feel a little bit more satisfying when it comes to a guy who is a recognized, you know, alpha male with, you know, uh, social proof with pre-selection. I mean, if you look at, at Gene Simmons or Mick Jagger, those guys have pre-selection and those guys have a gravitas to them that, you know, that Harvey Weinstein and Louis CK are never going to have any kind of access to. So I would almost say that guys like, Louis C.K. are going to be a more juicier target for women because they, first of all, they're going to be, they're going to resent that. And then second of all, every other woman in, you know, who, who's been in that same situation is going to take her side. She's going to say, it's, remember I always talk about the sisterhood Uber Alice. They're going to take that, that girl's side because, you know, Louis C.K. is a creep and uh, Harvey Weinstein is a creep. Uh, Mick Jagger and Gene Simmons are not creeps. And I think what was it, um, right about the time that Bobby Brown had uh, hit uh, Rihanna, like if you look at, the, at, at that situation, and you look at the tweets that happened during that time, um, you had women saying, 
Bobby Brown can beat me anytime he wants to. Right. You know, because Bobby Brown, who is, you know, a serial confirmed abuser, is still getting tweets from women who are saying, I, I'll let him beat me if that's what it takes, you know, because that's because he has that alpha gravitas. Whereas if you've got a guy who is, you know, a, a scumbag or a beta, you know, beta male, women are going to pile on top of that guy because he doesn't have the same satisfaction, the same, I would say, hypergamously optimal uh, male than these other guys are. And, and that's not just exclusive to celebrity status. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you probably saw this doing, doing the work that you do, but there was that Tinder experiment done where they took that attractive portrait of like a 21 year old male model. He was like a 10 out of 10 sort of thing. And then his bio said that he was, you know, charged for pedophilia, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he was going to treat women in these certain indiscriminate ways, like just blatantly calling it out. And they had all the screen captures of the, of the comments and messages back to them where it's like women just didn't matter because he was an alpha stud. It was like, you know, the alpha fuck sort of thing. Right. Right. Well, and then we're also, that's what I was going to say is we're at a position right now societally where women's beta buck side of things is already taken care of where, you know, whether it's a, a resource transfer that is direct or it is an indirect transfer from men, women, or even just legislation. I mean, I got into this when we were at the 21 commission, but it, we're, we're talking about the beta buck side of the hypergamous equation is more or less taken care of for women in Western, you know, affluent societies right now. So what's left? What's left is the alpha fuck side of things. Mm. And so that's where uh, women are queuing themselves in on it. They don't, they don't care if the guy is a convicted felon. They don't care. I mean, what, was the, what was the guy, the one, the one black guy who was like this really gorgeous looking guy who was a convicted felon um, and his, his picture got out onto Twitter. And then his name's just on the tip of my tongue right now. But, um, but he ended up getting a modeling gig and, and primarily because so many women said, I don't care if he's a, a, you know, an incarcerated felon. I would have his babies, you know? Right. And so when you see more and more and more of that and you see less and less of the beta side of things being in any way valuable, um, you can sort of begin to understand why a guy like Gene Simmons is going to be a different quality than a guy like Louis C.K. in that same indiscretion. So you've got, I mean, I would say that being a convicted felon is certainly a big indiscretion. So if the guy is hot and he satisfies the alpha fuck side of the equation, then he's, he gets a pass and he gets in, in he becomes a, he becomes really a celebrity and becomes pre-selected and has that social proof. Whereas if the guy was this really kind of creepy scumbag and they, and his you know, face got onto Twitter, women would pile on to say, oh, this guy deserves the full extent of the law. Let's take the provisioning side of beta. Like you're saying this is being taken care of by women that are, you know, obviously successful in the workforce with taking care of themselves. They got university degrees. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of different stats that I've come across. Some of them say, you know, women between the age of 20 and 30 make more than men at that age bracket in some instances. So, um, and if they're not able to provision for themselves, they've of course got the state, if they're single mommies and they draw money from, you know, the government, uh, if they're divorced, they can draw it from their spouse because the way family law, uh, handles the provisioning aspect of things. So but and let's not forget, they also have a lot of, a lot of women like to say, well, not everybody's like that, but when all women get special dispensations for things. So if it get, if it means you can get into, um, in, get into college easier, or if you can get into a particular, um, uh, program at college easier because you're a woman or you have access to special programs societally is one other way that, um, women have a resource advantage that men do not. Yeah. So that's, that's making really becoming alpha and understanding the red pill community and, and, and operating, you know, the way that I put is, is operate the world with a lens of red pill awareness. So that, you know, the, so that you see these things, it, it just, it just matters that much more, you know, for men in the future. Mm -hmm. um, I think that what we're seeing uh, contingently on men's part is that they also build that up or they try to be, uh, they try to build up the, the alpha side of things. And the re the, the reason I'm saying that is because I just recently, I read a, um, an article, and I think it was on Forbes or something, where they were polling some of the top 500 earners in the United States, and these are, these are all men, um, saying, you know, what is it 
that's next for you? What is it about your life? You have everything. What is it that you would add to your life? What else would you, you know, what would you do if you could, you know, have something more? Because you're already billionaires. You're already, you know, very high status, very powerful men. And each one of them said, I wish I had a better physique. Hmm. I wish I could. I wish I had more hair. <laughs> I wish I, um, you know, it was always something that was about what I would qualify as an alpha trait or something that women would see more as, uh, you know, something that's physically attractive that would satisfy that side of things because they already know that what difference does it make if they make another, uh, you know, two or $3 million or what difference does it make if they acquire the next company? What they're really looking forward to, you know, for is some way to satisfy that side of the hypergamous equation that they haven't been able to just yet. Got it. Got it. All right, Roll, I just want to thank you for your time today. Really appreciate that. Uh, again, links are in the description below. If you guys have a comment, uh, please do so. Leave something down there, smash the like button, and share this with somebody that might need to see it. Thanks, Roll.